Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and today I'm here with Humberto, who I have just met. The only reason he's here is because he's a super cool guy and he's got a super badass car SUV truck. It's a 1964 carry-off. There we go. That's exactly what it is. But it's not just a 1964 carry-all, right? Like I get, now let's, let, let me ask you this. When you got it, was it already in good shape or was it a total beater? Well, it was kind of probably like 70% good, the other 30% was a beater. But okay. it's pretty much in good shape. Okay, so it wasn't like a total rust bucket that no, you started not, with. No, Okay. And you said you've owned this since 97, is it? 1997, April 1997. And has it been like, has it been project along the way as you've been building it? I've been building. I've been adding stuff to it as, as the years have gone by. Yeah. And that way it's it now, it took me at least 10 years to get the way it is now. Got it. And then the, the most recent thing was doing the engine you've done, which we should pop the hood and show everyone yeah. what you did here. So LS. It's an LS3. Got it. From Blueprint Engines. Okay. It's currently now 5.7 at the flywheel. Yep. Also, I uh, added a 5-speed Tramec TKO. 200. Nice. Curious, why 5-speed instead of 6? Well, what I've heard, honestly, some people don't even use 6 gears. Okay. And I see myself, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going 80 on the freeway. I'm barely hitting the 2,000 RPMs. Wow, okay. Yeah. So I yeah. think the 6, the no 6, need. no need. Yeah. I also has a center force clutch, dual friction clutch. It's Those guys cool. do great stuff. Yeah. They really do. Yeah, Will's a nice guy too. Yep. Is it all like stock frame on, underneath? It's all stock frame, uh -huh. just the uh, upper and lower arms from CVP. I got the disc brakes from Wilwood disc brake, 14 inch rotors with 16 piston calipers in the front. Mm -hmm. Then we got 13 inch rotors with four piston calipers in the back and the rear. Okay. I mean, it's so unique, dude. I, I gotta admit, like I've, I've, I mean, any of you guys that are watching right now are gonna laugh possibly that I haven't seen one of these hot rodded. Like when you pulled in, first question I asked you was, what is this? Is it a Suburban? Is it, you know, because I don't... Yeah, I'm, it's a Suburban. It is a Suburban, but they were called back in those days, carry-alls. Yeah. I always, I always like to call it by what's called before, carry-all. Sure. Yeah. And for those that are not aware of what carry-all and stuff like that, it's suburban. It suburban and they, Some right. people that, pretty much, some people look at it as this is a station wagon. Right. But I think the way I was able to build it has given that, that look of a station wagon. Definitely. Unless you kind of like dig into it, and then you start popping the whole suburban, like, oh, okay, now I can see what it is. It's really great looking, though. I mean, I love your, Thank I you. love your choice on wheels here. I'm gonna get credit to an individual. It's my nephew. He's not here, but okay. just, he's actually I had different wheels. He's like, you know, hey, you change your wheels, and I was like, those you know, hesitant, like, why? What's what wrong with the ones I have? They're totally played. And he kind of threw me some ideas, so I liked the idea. I went with this one, and. He's always like, see, I told you. Yeah. So I, I'm going to give him credit for that. Good, man. Good job, dude. You nailed it on the wheel choice Yeah, here. Mikey. <laughs> uh, also, he said, you need to upgrade your disc. I'm like, yeah, it's not coming out of your pocket, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it because, you know, once you're driving something big like this, at the time I had the big lock, but still, you I mean, now I'm running more power than it. Sure. Than the big lock had. Sure. So you got to stop. You know. And part of it is, I mean, let's be honest, when you're building something like this, part of it is the look and with an open wheel like this where you can see through, you don't want to have a teeny little brake on there. It's going to... No, you don't. I mean, I'm, I'm all about performance, but also part of it really is the look. And, yeah, definitely, because you know. this wheel allows the, the caliper and the wheel, the, the brakes to pop out as well. For sure. Now, what do you have for a rear end in this? It's a, it's a stock 12 bolt. Really? Posse. It's posse though. Mm -hmm. It's a stock 12 bolt Chevrolet. Interesting. I like to keep it 12 bolt. Um, yeah. It's worked fine so far. Hey man, if it works, why why mess with it, right? So is this original just recovered? It's original seats, front and back. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of modifications to it mm -hmm. in terms of the the design to it. Yeah. I want a double stitching, this leather. Yeah. And I want to keep the stock seats because they're really hard to find. Yeah, they're I'm out sure. there. And I'm it, sure. I want to keep that stock feel to it in a way and put the modification at the same time yeah 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 and then you went with the budnick wheel to match the wheels yeah, yeah. which is cool it looks great I mean, it really overall just looks wonderful now as far as the gauge goes is that that's, that's not a stock gauge no that's the Coda digital the, ah, new, R there you the go. new rtx um system they came out with uh -huh. um credit to one of my buddies at a uh, mexi built yeah over there in bonaparte he actually came out and helped me out and, to install it all that and kind of did some wiring for my LS. So credit to those guys yeah. helping me out. Have you, so this whole build, has this been you building it and then with help from friends and stuff like that? I mean, obviously you got upholstery done by someone else, but 
Like all the mechanical stuff, are you the one? Yeah, I was, as a matter of fact, I was really hesitant to install the LS. I mean, it's, it sounds very, um, very intimidating to do all this, to the LS swap in itself, but yeah. honestly, it's not that really difficult. Once you're in it, I knew more about the mechanical side of it. Yeah. However, just the, the more, the most thing that kind of gets you like a little scared of is the whole electrical part of it. I'm sure. But once it's, you start connecting all the, the, the uh, sensors, it, the whole wiring harness speaks for itself. But other than that, I mean, I was able to do it in my garage. My nephews helped me out. Yeah. So it took me a while, but I did it. Yeah. Also the same, the transmission too. I never had done, never had installed a stick shift transmission before. So I, I also did that. So you did this yourself? Yeah. Okay, now how about, did you, you didn't paint this yourself. No, I don't have, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have, pa I don't really have patience for paint. That's something that I don't have patience for, to yeah, be honest dude, with you. Yeah, that's, that's a, but I want to give credit to one of a good friend of mine. Um, he's my neighbor in Eastside Customs. I mean, he's a young guy, and I saw he has, has good talent. He does yeah. really good cars, yeah. and I just I wanted him to do my truck, and here we are. Great job. One of the first things when I started flipping through pictures on your Instagram that caught me, I'm such a center exit guy. I love the center exit exhaust. When I did the Alice swap, I want to go with three-inch exhaust all the way. I, okay. had, I had two and a half when I had the big block. So I wanted that thing to flow perfectly. Yeah. That's a 1960, 64 to 66 C10 bumper, okay. fleet side. Okay. So I flipped over so I could be able to exit the exhaust through there. This is not the original. So bumper. that cutout would have been for license plate yeah. or something? Or? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I did, That's uh, awesome. I, I like the smooth, the smooth uh, part of it, how it plays the smooth. Yeah. The original one pops a lot more. Yeah. I didn't, it looks nice, but it's not what I wanted, the look I was seeking for. Mm -hmm. So I like the smooth that it wraps more towards the body. And then mm -hmm. allows me to bring the exhaust to the. To the yep. And then it has a dual, um, dual uh, Borla exhaust. Oh, got yeah. it. Okay. I love okay. the tone of Borla. Borla is a great company for and sure. And then here the Chevrolet sign here in the back. I um, actually also want to match my front grille. Yeah. To match my wheels. Yeah, I noticed. And the lettering, the Chevrolet matches the interior. Yeah. I really like what you've done here. I, I'm. I'm curious, so the next thing is, what there is to do is, we gotta go for a drive, you know that. Oh, right? definitely, Yeah, definitely. We're, we're gonna go for a drive, you guys, and check this thing out. All right, you guys, before we go for a drive, we've got merch, atlamerch.com. We've got really cool shirts, hats, stickers, and I absolutely love our keychains. Now, let's go for a drive. such a go-to for transmissions too, aren't they? Yeah, they're good. They just do such a great trans. That's it for our shoot of this completely badass LS swap carryall, which now I know what it's called is a carryall. And as you can see, it's big because I'm walking for a while here, but I absolutely love, love what Umberto did with this, man. The, the center exit exhaust is great. I love that it's a garage build, that he's had it for over 20 years in different versions but this is where he's taken it to. I mean, everything, big brakes, LS, clean interior, manual trans. I mean, this is really 
This is a cool one, man. I absolutely love this and very unique. This is different for us. So I hope you guys had fun in this episode because you got to know I had a blast. As always, thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we do. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later.